Good afternoon, everyone. It's Dr. Gershon with another Endeavor Better Health webinar and podcast. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today with a real visionary, a leader um, in healthcare, Tom Castles, who's the CEO and president of Rock Health. Tom and I have had a number of really dynamic and, and I would say important and relevant conversations over the past several months. And we want to bring some of that to you. Um, it's very important right now that we address the macroeconomic impact of a liquidity crisis, of changes in the digital landscape in the world. And those are some of the things that impact um, emerging companies in particular, looking at the new skill sets that are required for CEO, founder, entrepreneurs and leadership and resilience and partnering and collaboration. And, and Tom is really a visionary, um, a humble visionary, but he's a, a visionary who's going to talk to you about Rock Health. What is Rock Health? What does it stand for? What is it doing in its investor category, in its advisory work, and it's in its, in its uh, nonprofit work? All three are aligned very much with addressing where the puck is going, as Wayne Gretzky said, um, as opposed to where it is now. So first... I want to, before we begin the webinar podcast, I want to thank everyone once again for being incredibly supportive of the Endeavor Better Health platform. Um, we now have 1.3 million views. We're building momentum because I think that this platform is designed as an open source platform to collaborate in an, in an integrative um, an iterative fashion where people can share their thoughts and comments. It's about collaboration and partnership, which is necessary for building a stronger, more sustainable healthcare system. So thank you everyone for, for, for logging in, for being supportive, for your thoughts and comments. And I would urge you um, when you do log on, if you have a question, feel free to first let us know where you're logging in from. And second, please include your email so that if we can't get to your question today, be more than happy to send you a response. So with that, I'm going to introduce Tom Castles, who's the CEO and president of Rock Health, and ask Tom to talk to us a little bit and give us a background of both himself and Rock Health. What is his vision and, and what is Rock Health all about? Uh, well, thank you so much, Martin. And I really appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation. Um, I, I don't know about visionary, but, uh, I have spent, uh, 20 plus years in the, in the healthcare, uh, ecosystem, uh, first as a health services researcher, uh, then as a, uh, a strategy consultant for, uh, providers, plans, digital health companies, um, the, the, the thing that um, actually is is probably most um, integral to the way that I look at uh, my role in healthcare is that um, I think this is an industry um, that is is kind of deeply misunderstood um, even by the folks inside of it. Uh, so what I what I've learned, how I've learned most of what uh, is really kind of uh, central to the way I go about uh, my work and why I'm um, doing that at Rock Health is the fact that I'm a I'm a super user user of uh, of healthcare. Uh, so uh, I personally live with a serious mental illness and um, I have lived experience of how fragmented and broken um, the idea of creating solutions for, uh, for whole health needs are uh, between physical medicine, mental health, et cetera. Um, I, uh, I have two, um, uh, 
handsome young uh, sons who are both uh, neurodiverse. And um, I have seen the distinction uh, in terms of services that can be um, procured uh, if you have means versus if you don't. Uh, and it's incredibly painful to, um, to, to, to see my friends uh, and their families who frankly did not have the same means. Um, and, and, and it made, made, made me very angry. Uh, and it, uh, that, that experience uh, in and of itself has, um, has taken me from a track where I spent a lot of time really thinking about um, what might be um, to getting closer to, uh, you know, how can we find solutions for, uh, for healthcare? Rock Health um, has been around since 2010 and has taken on uh, a number of different, uh, different forms. Um, right now, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're a transformation engine. We want um, to trans, uh, transform healthcare for all humanity and to bring more humanity to healthcare. That's our, uh, that's our vision. Uh, and we know that you can't do that uh, through w one lever. Uh, so we have three levers that we think are all equally important um, uh, to, to, to drive toward our vision. Um, the first uh, is uh, we, we focus all of our work on the lens of health equity. Uh, and uh, we do that through primarily through uh, our, uh, our parent organization, rockhealth.org. Uh, and, and there we focus on both the, the kind of opening of the aperture to um, uh, founders uh, and investors uh, to have conversations of great meaning from different lived experiences. Um, so we champion um, really the kind of deal flow uh, uh, diversification uh, toward more uh, female founders, founders of color, uh, founders from rural markets. Uh, and we think that that's really important because innovation, it, no innovation is innovation if it doesn't actually translate to the broadest possible population in, in our perspective. Now, in order to push that forward, we have two other levers. Um, first, Rock Health Capital. Um, uh, and I should mention um, Katie Drasser, is the CEO of, of rockhealth.org and, and really kind of my touchdown um, uh, for being here. Rock Health Capital, uh, which is led by Bill Evans, our, our general partner, uh, is, is really focused on how do we support early stage entrepreneurs who have this vision of we're delivering full solutions not features to healthcare, uh, and he does an incredible job uh, of of kind of pushing um, through funding uh, uh, the the entrepreneurial innovator. Uh, and then there's Rock Health Advisory, which uh, which I lead. Um, uh, I'm also a venture partner in Rock Health Capital. Um, Rock Health Advisory is about pushing the intrapreneurial uh, innovators. So folks who are inside large healthcare organizations, um, healthcare adjacent organizations like retail, um, big tech, et cetera, to, to really focus them on two, two areas. One, 
where can we, we be using uh, digital to do what we do better? And two, where can we be using digital to do better things? Things that aren't currently part of the healthcare um, value chain. So, you know, my my lived experience requires that I work with an organization that sees the lived experience of the, the broadest possible community uh, and has these different levers to pull um, so that we can really push the timeline on transformation. That's oh, such a great overview. And so I think important for um, many of the CEO entrepreneur founders to understand that you know, vision is the starting point and then enrolling people in the vision, you know, really is is the engine that drives that. And, you know, frankly, you know, what you've done is bring together some outstanding people who I've met recently over the past few months um, who can take the vision, the shared vision, in, in fact, um, to create real meaningful change. And I think, you know, the one of the key points and core points of this conversation today is to talk about the future and talk about in a practical, tactical way, you know, what do we need in terms of people? What do we need in terms of skill sets? What is the is the changing landscape that in part is is being driven by new innovation and technologies like AI and machine learning and deep learning? These these new technologies do require different skill sets from entrepreneurs. There's also in parallel to all of this, an adjustment being made by large industry leaders. And, you know, one of the exciting things about this conversation is that you have your finger on the pulse of emerging company CEO founders, as well as key industry leaders. And yes. so for me, when I'm a moderator or a keynote in, in, in conferences, the message, you know, from industry is, is crystal clear. We want the technology. We want the innovation. We want to work with emerging companies. But there's often a disconnect between what the founders and entrepreneurs see as relevant, important, and, and their next steps compared to what industry leaders want. And the message is that there is a certain set of skill sets with required understanding of how do you bring innovation into a large scale business effectively what does that require and and the thesis really is which is centering on the core of our conversation about leadership about being able to adapt and pivot and bring technology in an, in an integrative way piece by piece through collaborations and partnerships working on various projects within industry because it's not just a turn of the key it's not you know, for the past 20 years, we were about, you know, driving disruptive innovation at any cost. And and now really cost is a factor, um, both both human, human cost um, as well as financial. So I love for you, you know, with that kind of long preamble, um, which I took the liberty of giving, really to set the stage for you to talk about, you know, you've made a lot of investments and you understand what industry needs and you see what's happening on the founder side. Talk about some of these leadership skill sets that, that you see as the next step in, in evolution um, for Rock Health and, and to improve the healthcare system in general. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most important um, leadership skill sets is um, self-awareness. So, you know, I think there are an awful lot of, there are an awful lot of people who, for example, understand uh, the technology mm -hmm. of the last decade. And, uh, and I, I include big data, uh, machine learning, AI, uh, you know, these are not new technologies. Um, they're also not products. Uh, and I think some of the some of the CEOs uh, that I really admire uh, understand 
that there's a difference between wielding a tool and understanding an actual job to do for their customers. So a, a good example of that is, um, you know, a couple of companies that I really admire. Um, one uh, is is one that uh, we've invested in at Rock Health called Arene. Arene is an AI uh, digital platform for um, uh, medication therapeutic management. Uh, and the, the CEO, Yuna Kim, who's a pharmacist by training, um, was really self-aware enough to understand the problem was not, we have to optimize the um, pharmacological care plan. The challenge is we have a lot of people on medications that just stay on those medications for time immemorial, regardless of need. Um, we also, have a lack of transparency for physicians in a given moment to see, okay, what 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 medications are people both knowledgeable that they are taking, and are they taking them? Are they actually filling these scripts? So in the end, what Areen does is it's truly excellent at giving a clear picture to physicians that they don't have right now of these are the scripts that have been filled for your patient. Given that, do you still want to make the same decision on adding a new medication? The other issue that it solves is, by the way, um, are these medications still necessary? So it's both a, a, a view into drug-drug interactions, but it's also about deprescribing. Um, it's deeply unsafe for people to be on medications for you know, long periods of their life that are, that are not necessary. And so you know, the self-awareness to understand the problem behind the problem that might not be quite as sexy, um, but is really driving outcomes on the quality and cost side. I have, I have a lot of respect for people um, uh, like Yuna who are pushing forward um, these business models that actually um, kind of make sense intuitively to the, the large players um, that, uh, that, that I also work with. Um, a couple of other folks who I think are doing this really well in the using AI um, include uh, uh, Ilad Wallach uh, at AIDoc, um, Tamir Wolf at Theater, who are really looking at how do you um, how do you become the safety net for catching um, human error? Um, so in the case of AI doc, missing, um, uh, missing bleeds in, uh, in a uh, CT scan. Um, in a theater, like when there is an outcome um, in a surgery that you, you didn't expect, how do you actually identify what were kind of root causes of something that went on during surgery? Or is it just something that you didn't know about the patient? Um, again, the AI is not the thing. The use case and the self-awareness to understand, okay, what are challenges facing providers in this case, um, that end up costing uh, patients and going after that use case rather than just playing with data. 
Um, and I think there's that, that that's really important. I also think um, resilience is another huge leadership uh, requirement. And a couple of the people that I am most um, uh, most admire here, frankly, are very poorly served by the capital markets. Um, uh, the first I would mention um, is uh, Carlos Rodarte, uh, who is the co-founder of uh, a company called Veritios, um, which is really looking at how do you connect communities of, um, of service providers with the communities that they most likely should be serving, but there's just a, a yawning gap between getting a referral and actually receiving um, receiving care. Uh, now, you know that isn't um, that isn't necessarily rewarded uh, as many SaaS based. Um, uh, digital health technologies are, and I think the resilience that uh, that that Carlos shows is to find different mechanisms for funding to address uh, a need that that truly um, is a problem to solve, and has a technological aspect of solving that problem, but is you know service heavy um so you know i have a lot of respect for um for folks who are in that position and i also have a lot of folk a lot of respect for people who view the job of creating partnerships that work um, for problems that cannot be solved by one party alone as a business model, um, uh, and and uh, I'm going to use another example of a company that we've invested in, uh, Rosarium Health, uh, and its founder uh, Cameron Carter. Um, Cameron has a long background in the health plan space, and he believes, like I do, that the kind of last half decade of um, growth in the supplemental benefit category. Uh, I hate that term because um, it's often um, these benefits that are uh, that are driven not by clinical fee schedules, um, but by um, environmental need um, are the difference maker in people's whole health. Um, and Rosarium really focuses on creating a marketplace that connects um, home contractors with occupational therapists to go into people's homes to make sure that they are um, safe for people to come home to from the hospital safe for people to continue to live in as they age um, and need to have more care in their home, but don't wish to go into an institutional setting. We can't afford the model for aging that we have today. And that, that, that insight that these two parties need to work together, I think is, is really a, a a sign of that um, kind of leadership quality of understanding what dots need to be connected in order to be successful. So I, I apologize for the monologue, but it was a really good question. Um, and I kind of see different characteristics as the, the kind of active ingredient for different companies. Yeah, just, I mean, such a great overview, plus backed up with real data, real people, you know, real life stories. We don't have time today to really 
get super granular on all of them, but I would like to focus in on a couple of things and maybe take a second to codify what I see as un unifying messages. First, leaders in all three companies who have a vision. And I'm sure, and I would love to explore this, that that vision has morphed and changed and evolved. You know, And that is part of leadership. Being humble, and you and I have talked about this, being in love with in love with your technology is never a great idea. Being in, in in love with the idea that you have a tool, as you talked about, which others can use, and use cases, which you talked about. So I'd like to focus in on the connection between this leadership ability to adapt, pivot, and partner. Because really, if you look at some of the great entrepreneurs of the world, you know, that's what they do. They start off in one direction, they iterate, um, they listen to what the needs of the consumer are or the needs of the partner are. So I would love to be able to explore in any one of these particular companies that partner, that partnering aspect, which unlocked value for these companies. Because in this day and age, if you're siloed and you have an innovation and technology that you think is going to change the world, the chances are you're not going to be the next Google or Microsoft or Apple. You're going to need to partner with an intermediary. And, and I would say for, for us at Endeavor, while we look to work very closely with the Fortune 500 companies and develop project level partnerships, um, feasibility studies, commercialization, you know, uh, data driven studies, we actually look to sell our companies to the new unicorns, the one to $5 billion companies that are in hyper growth mode, because eventually they will be acquired by the larger companies. And so this, this network or food chain, if you will, of partnering and data collection and gathering um, addresses an important point that industry leaders are bringing to me, which is how do you integrate technology, which is a tool to solve problems that we see that we have. And you've given an example of three really cool companies with different and critically important problems. So I'd love for you to talk about, you know, pick any one of the companies or more if you like, um, and talk about that ability to listen, you know, to, to partners needs, the use cases. That would be a great conversation. Yeah. And I also do want to, um, Humility is uh, is not a word that gets thrown around in uh, in VC uh, all that often. Right. Um, but the real kind of the folks who have staying power, um, they have it in spades, um, you know. And I also think they have champions. Uh, yes. So you know. An, ex an example there, you know, I, I would say that there are there are certain investors, um, and I, 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 by by definition, if I name one person um, or ten people, I will forget, um, uh, you know, a dozen more that uh, that that I admire. Um, but there are some investors um, who are the definition of both um, conviction um, and patience. Uh, I I think um, the the folks uh, that I think about when I think about that, um, uh, you know. Obviously, I have a great deal of respect for my partner, uh, Bill Evans. Um, but, you know, I think uh, Lin Chow O'Keefe, um, uh, Julie Yu, the folks at Hope Lab, the folks at Cape Or Capital, um, what they're able to do um, is, is really tell, tell the truth to people that they respect. Um, when people don't necessarily want to hear that truth, um, and um, you know, I, I think also when when they, they talk about the problems in 
uh, the problems they'll face in scaling their businesses, pointing out specific aspects that um, that that make more sense. So there's a, a difference between, you know, we'll use Rosarium for example. Um, you know, I've seen other people who their approach is, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to roll up a ton of occupational therapists. Uh, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to get sole source contracts for going out and delivering these um, uh, supplemental benefits um, to check on, you know, you know, what, what needs to be the case for a safe admission to home to happen. Well, that's really a very expensive way to solve a problem, which is actually not solving the problem. Identifying what needs to happen is not a solution. Um, it's a feature. Putting the people who can identify what needs to happen together with the people who can actually drill the holes, you know, uh, you know, put in the ramps, put on the, the safety bars. You're not solving somebody's problem unless you're doing both of those things. And you certainly don't need to hire a lot of contractors or OTs enabled to, to, to do that. Um, so, you know, I think the, the, the humility to listen to um, um, not just your customer, but your investors. Um, you know, one one that I come back to a lot, who's not an investor, um, uh, but uh, I will say is is a very important um, part of how we do what we do at Rock Health uh, is uh, uh, Michael Escadel from Fenwick and West. And one of the things that I think he does um, with the, the founders that he works with is, um, you know, he is always in your corner and he's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to be tough when he needs to be tough. Uh, and I think, you, you know, there are businesses today that people um, may have uh, use the example of a very successful um, business and uh, uh, that, I, that I admire, which is uh, Evidation. Um, you know, back, back in the early days, um, Christine and, and, and uh, Lemke and Deb Kilpatrick, you know, I think there was a, a feeling that they might be more of a consulting services company than a data company. Um, and really working hard to make the make the the reality of what they do, which is a uh, you know a, a value added data um, business. Um, you know, a big part of that was just their grit, um, but also the advice that they they received from. Uh, from folks like Michael, um, and and so, you know, there there are no, what I have what I've come to understand is that whenever you hear someone tell you the hero story of their company, um, be skeptical. Um, none of us are heroes. Uh, we all have to be able to listen and learn from people who want to see us be successful. And that's a leadership characteristic that I think um, we, we haven't talked about, which is listening. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it might sound trite, um, but there are two different ways of listening, you know, listening until you can respond <laughs> um, 
and listening, especially for things that you disagree with or you think are unfair. Um, and then actually holding those things in your mind as if this was true, how would I think about my business differently? How would I think about the people I bring into my business differently? How would, the, how would I think about the technology that is at the center of my business differently? I, I am, um, I'm constantly asked about, you know, unicorns that, uh, unicorns that fall. Everybody wants to talk about all of this week and how it's, a, you know, it, 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 it was, you know, some people say it was inevitable and some people say it's a trend. They're both wrong. Um, uh, you know, it, it's not a trend. Um, the, the difference is, you know, they just didn't have strong horses. Uh, and I couldn't care less about unicorn status. Um, uh, all of our LPs pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> um, uh, what I care about is, do you have the people both at the top um, of the organization leading around those leaders and the capability of communicating to a team that what we're doing right now, um, we can be, we're going to change and it's a change for the better. People don't like change. People are very uncomfortable with that. And so it takes a special type of leader um, to be strong enough to make that case. And now more than ever, that the, the, the folks who are leading these strong horse companies, um, that they're, they're listeners, they're adapters, they're partners, they're looking for all of the different ways that what they've learned through the life of their business could be of value to the future of their business. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's just a lot different than leaning on whiz bang tech stacks. Um, you know, that, that's just not that, that alone, um, may get you in the door. But if you get in the door and then search for use cases for year after year after year, you may achieve unicorn status, um, but you're going to be telling a story that um, that's very different than uh, the the companies that that end up having having lasting impact. No, I mean, there, there's so much to unpack there and, and really kind of words of wisdom, I think, authentically, you know, brought to the forum um, with an understanding that both you and I, you know, have been doing this for a couple of decades, which by its very nature means that we have experiences and scars. And, and so part, part of the message is, and, and I'll say this, you know, hopefully, you know, with a unified voice for both of us, you know, Endeavor and Rock Health stand for collaboration and partnership, and we're here to help in any way that we can without a sense of, you know, hubris. Like, you know, we're only human beings, and we've made, you know, many, many mistakes, I'm sure both of us. But through those mistakes, there is an intuitive process which looks at what is the template for success. And and when, when I speak with, with entrepreneur founders, I ask them, generally four questions, which I, I, I think, it, it, I hope is meaningful. First is, how do you define success? And we've been talking about that today. Like the success of the past 20 years is defined by Silicon Valley is not going to be the success story or these unicorns of the next 20 years. It's going to be the impact that the companies have, the sustainable impact. Mm -hmm. And, and how, do you, how do you begin to tell, you know, pre-seed and seed stage level companies 
you know, that it's not about the one or $500,000 check, but it's about building a strong business with strong teams that can, you know, weather the ups and downs, uh, you know, of the currents and the tides. Um, and so that takes leadership and character and courage and conviction and partners who, as you said in, in one of your comments, you know, you need, you didn't use the word mentor, but you need, you need advocates, you need supporters, you need people who believe in you, you need champions is the word that you used. And so I think that, you know, what's exciting for me is these are human values. These are very humanistic values. The importance of humanistic values is, 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 is that they're, they're very, very strong when you build them with aligned vision. Yeah. And, and so I think the first thing is, the, what is the definition of success? And then the second question is, who do you need to enroll to build that success. You know, what does that enrollment process look like, whether it's a person or a champion or a company or a combination? And then finally, the last two would be, you know, when you achieve success, what are people going to say about you and your company? What do you stand for? What is your brand? What is your image? And then lastly, what is the roadmap, the long-term roadmap to be able to continue this success? You know, how did you get there and where are you going to go? And so for me, you know, these questions require feedback from other people and organizations. And one of the entrepreneurs that I particularly find outstanding is Reid Hoffman. Hmm. I think he really understands this mosaic extremely well. I think he brings sage words without chest pounding. Um, to, to open forums, you know, quite frequently. And, um, you know, I, I think I could talk to you for hours about this, but we are running out of time. So what I want to do, first of all, is just a huge thank you for, for this important chance to hear your thoughts about the incredible people that you're working with, the support that you've given them, the vision that they have. I love to invite you know, all of the companies that you mentioned onto the Better Health platform, you know, should they choose to, to take advantage of that for the purpose of sharing, just like we shared now. Um, hopefully this conversation has been a catalyst for thought, for exchange of ideas between entrepreneurs, between industry, and hopefully the notion that we can build you know, successful companies that really have meaningful impact on healthcare and human beings um, has, has been a very important core message here. With that, I really want to thank people who have signed in today. And, and I will say one of the companies that I personally have a vested interest in, um, you know, uh, a, a company that um, is in the uh, uh, telemedicine um uh, industry is, is, has logged on today. I want to thank Jose Lima and Tiago Caderas, uh, Pedro Lopez, um, who have all, you know, taken the leap of bringing an important healthcare company from Europe uh, over to the U.S. It takes a lot of courage to be able to do that in a time of, you know, economic uh, stress. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, a shout out to everyone who's logged in today. Alexandra, thank you so much. Tiago, Jose, uh, Gloria. We have people uh, dialing in from Germany, from Norway, from the United States. Thank you so much for your support. And I would say if you have any questions of, of Tom, um, feel free to forward them to me at endeavor at gershoncapital.com. I'm happy to pass them along. I wanna thank everyone for the tremendous support they've given. And for all those entrepreneurs and founders out there, please uh, take heart in that there are a lot of people who want to help. And, and, and I think, you know, Tom Cleary is one of those people who, um, you know, has shown by actions over quite a number of years that there is a thoughtful process that respects human values and that the mission, when it's aligned with important contributions to human beings is supported by people who sustain their support, both financially and strategically. So I really, I want to thank Tom once again for the, the work that he's done, for the work that he continues to do. 
And I look forward to our next conversation, which hopefully will be very, very soon. So thank you everyone for signing in today. Tom, thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate everything. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Hang on for one second, Tom, and I'm just going to sign us off here. You got it.